Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Smith. I love our bold uh, theme, and I want to talk about being bold and courageous and confident and creative with technology and innovation. And Dylan and I talk a lot about this idea that I have, which is, how do you play the whole orchestra? And so a lot of times we have this idea that there's technical people and there's not technical people. But that's just flat out untrue. The universe doesn't separate the subjects, and we don't need to. It's just how we're stereotyping them and our lack of history. So how do we feel like we could play any of the instruments? And if you don't feel confident in one, go get a teammate. Pull them in. But don't have TQ, TQ, tech IQ, like IQ and EQ, out of the room. Put it in the room with you, because we need it more than ever. So just for fun, I love toys, <laughs> uh, because uh, it just it makes things accessible. And, and so I just brought two or three little things. But you guys have seen you know, drones, right, and, and these UAVs. Um, you know, here's a little one this year. The 4-H kids did a contest, four, 7 million kids in, in the 4-H programs, using drones to solve a problem in their community, rural or urban. We're using these things for disaster response, for making amazing films, for vantage point, for counting crowds. Um, in fact, there's a team in England that's using drones flying about this high to rapidly plant a billion trees a year, rapid reforestation, shooting seed pods into the ground. What an amazing way to help with climate change, right? Um, sometimes I show you guys, I've shown you this before, it's a Raspberry Pi. It's just a board, it's just the board from your phone. You saw that image, you know, they're touch screens, LCDs. This is just components. Like, think of the ingredients when you're cooking something in the kitchen, ingredients of tech. How do we get more familiar with the ingredients so they don't feel like this scary thing that's gonna make you super bored or really intimidated? Uh, which is how we do in school. We have to be more active. And so, you know, here's the chips and brains. And I brought this one because I was lucky to take acoustics from Professor Bose and, uh, you know, of Bose speakers. And so I love, on behalf of him, he's, he's no longer with us, but they created a do-it-yourself speaker kit for, for anybody. I encourage you to get this kind of stuff. Here the chips are labeled. Here's the part of Bluetooth. Here's where the power supply comes in. You know, here's the controller. And so you can get a feel for this and put it together. It's got art. You can make it uh, all decked out. And uh, they even include this little, um, this little toy that you can play with so you can see the sound waves. You know, Hedy Lamarr, inventor, co-inventor of Spread Spectrum, uh, understood waves and how we could put things together and make our mobile phones. So what if we all just felt comfortable, like we're in the kitchen, but with technology? You know, Internet of Things and sensors. So that in addition to like our pink hats, we could have our pink uh, lab glasses. <laughs> so um, our boys, Kara's here. We have two boys. Um, they, uh, they had this amazing third grade teacher. This is one of their friends. It said, in effort, there's joy. In effort, there's joy. And what if you felt joy whenever you're working on all these different kinds of things? It's so important. It's one of the most important things to feel in life, together with understanding collaboration and compassion. Um, I wanted to share, I'm not going to be able to talk a lot about all the technology itself, uh, but I wanted to share that we did kind of a culminating conference with the president in, in Pittsburgh. He edited Wire magazine, and he wanted to talk about the frontiers, celebrate Everything that we've done over the last many years, he's really the most science and tech fast forward president we've had since Jefferson, astonishing. Uh, and, then he, and then really accelerate the country. And so we looked at five frontiers, um, personal and medical, local, not just smart cities and self-driving cars, which are amazing, but also smart, just, inclusive, economically inclusive cities that we can do. If we can make the car drive itself, we can work on justice with these technologies. Artificial intelligence uh, for good. Um, uh, global climate change work and interplanetary. And the one story I want to share from this was uh, there was a woman from a, a Blue Origin on stage, which is a rocket company in Seattle. Her husband works at Boeing. The kids were arguing. Her son said to her daughter, no, girls work on rockets and boys work on airplanes. <laughs> it's just what you think is what's true. The Dalai Lama wrote a really important piece after the election, and this was the headline. I think if you look at Brexit, our election, many of the things around the world, you can boil down one component of it is, do I feel confident that I'm included in the future? I'm in the South by Southwest crew. I'm making movies and films and tech, and I'm in the network, and I'm part of this kind of feeling. Or I feel afraid. I feel like I'm not going to be needed. And it's a fundamental thing to do service and care and do that. And I think you can do that with science and technology, and you can do that with writing. You do that with all the fields, play the whole orchestra 
And so I wanted to talk with you about how to make sure everyone feels this way. The president said, what'd you guys do? We made a page turn in robot. How'd you do that? We, we, we had a brainstorming. <laughs> then what? We built a prototype. What if everyone built a prototype when they were in kindergarten? The Muscogee Creek tribe in uh, Oklahoma is doing Head Start Robotics. What if this stuff was just fluent with us? You know, what if it was active? Like we teach PE and art and music. We do that with science and technology. You do it. Practice makes permanent. You learn to write by starting with letters, words, paragraphs. You learn science by starting. Crawl, walk, run, and not make it so intimidating. Uh, we have resources all around. So I'm just going to kind of point you through in this talk to resources and things we can do. We have national labs in most states. We can bring the kids in for a field trip, have them meet people. What's this for? How does this work? One of my favorite innovations, anyone from Arizona, the Phoenix team uh, has not only electing presidents and treasurers and different kids, they also elect chief science officers. And so you can bring it for your school as an evangelist. They're also really diverse kids because uh, the kids are electing them. So it's balanced, it's gender balanced. This morning from this stage we spoke to these kids. This is a team of refugee kids living in Lebanon from Syria who have a robotics team. They've been winning competitions. They're called Hope of Syria. In the morning we talked to the girls uh, Katie Coleman, astronaut Katie, and I spoke with them, and they said, why are you doing this? Because it's so fun to do it as a team. Why are you doing this? Because if you're not arrogant, you can really win. What a cool idea. Uh, <laughs> so number three, they said, uh, I also love all this technology. I love programming. It makes me feel special. It's magical. And number four, when we go home to Syria, we have a lot of things to fix, and we're going to need this knowledge. And we talked about them being science advisors to the president. The future also suggested they were also president. They like that. So tech hire is something we started with President Obama. It's really how do you use these new innovations that people have made to pull people into the 600,000 jobs open in our country. Our, country, our companies are starving for digital tech, front end, back end, uh, digital marketers. How do we get more people trained, everybody trained? Vice President was just in a training center north of uh, Del Mar towards Ferguson where the NAACP and code boot camps, these short course, are training 16 to 22 year olds. One out of six youth in our country are not in school in that age group and not in work. Let's just teach them to code and give them all these jobs and they make a lot of money. Uh, someone in New York went from 10 bucks an hour uh, to 85K in three months. This is possible, it's doable, and we can make it happen. Um, one last thing I'll mention is that the 35 coal miners in eastern Kentucky just graduated 10 days ago from coal boot camps. We can upgrade ourselves. We've done it through our whole history. Uh, President Washington and President Jefferson made the first coin for the United States. It said liberty, the parent of science and, tech and industry. So tech has always been part of us and we always upgrade. This is a hackathon. How many people have ever been to a hackathon? I don't mean like breaking the computers, I mean like fast sprinting together. So about, uh, about a third of us. Go to this National Day of Civic Hacking. Every June, these are all the cities participating. Wichita was doing a TV call to pull people in. All different people come together from tech and writing and that and, and work on city problems and the sprint for the day and then accelerate into solutions. You know, Joanna Barsh was just out here talking about the data on diversity. We really know that diverse teams make better things. There was a great thing that the Presidential Innovation Fellows did as United State of Women. They took the data sets from the Department of Commerce. It's a new package of data sets. We've over 200,000 data sets. Think about your phone and the data from the Map app that got you here or the Weather app. This is data that can come through apps. And so how could we hack the pay gap, the fair pay gap, using code? So they did a series of events. This is Secretary Pritzker from Commerce celebrating the many apps that people built across a couple months by doing these hack sprint methods. Look at this, this is VR. Put yourself in a situation of a salary negotiating, negotiating or manager, learn how to do this better. This is one where you click and you see your own pay gap based on real data. What's your personal situation? This is a really cool one where you go on a site and you choose who you are, what race, what gender, and then the prices change. And you suddenly see what happens uh, and what the real effect of this is. Um, Gloria Steinem, Octavia Spencer, amazing last night, pointing out that there's so many missing history points, right? We're missing this stuff. Katie took this photo from the space station. We have a default uh, sense that it's always a man who did it, but it's not. This is Seneca Falls down below. Did we have a parade in Washington? Did you know about this one? A few people, 1913. 
There they are. That's us, that's them, same place. So we can stand on the shoulders of our giants, celebrate and accelerate. Uh, the women took the fence exactly 100 years ago this year uh, to protest the first ever strategic protest of the White House. Here they are. You know, you can get out there and celebrate them. We use hashtag Galaxy of Women because Susan B. Anthony said that. You know, they talked about finding these stories. How do you find them? They're in the photos. See her? See her? First digital programmers in America. You know, we talked with Joanna Hoffman and Steve Jobs' Macintosh team last year. For those who are new, the women and men in this photograph built the Macintosh. The men all have speaking roles in the movies. The women are not in the cast. Joanna's finally in the cast. Kate Winslet won the Golden Globe for playing her. Joanna came out of the movie with her son, and she said, her son said, Mom, did you really iron Steve Jobs' shirt? No, Jeremy. She's from Eastern Europe, a physics grad from MIT, super intense. She's like, I've never ironed a shirt in my life except once for you. So the stereotypes are there. This is really important data. These are speaking roles cataloged across 2,000 films we watch. Every day we learn that men speak and women don't. Blue is men. Uh, this is women in red. And the children's television. So we're propagandizing ourselves. This is the meeting you were in. This is the textbook you watched. This is the movies. OK. Katherine Johnson, we talked about we're making progress. We're also working on tech inclusion pledge, 80 companies. We've got uh, capital coming much more towards diverse people. We've got things. This is raise the floor. Really, what can you do? How do you not move the meeting on diversity like you don't move the product meeting? That's what it means to do leadership. We're getting our 13-year-olds, Mark Zuckerberg and these guys, to code. We're working on justice and other topics with technology. Uh, we also have. Uh, the Open Government Partnership, which is really all the things I'm talking about, are actually happening all around the world. There really was a code hackathon in the palace in Paris, right where Napoleon wrote the civil code. But it was the code for civil code. With uh, 300 people, 70 different countries working on really using these technologies to advance their societies, bring much more inclusion, capability, what we need as a world. Mm -hmm.